Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We are going to cross pin a pinledge preparation where we have purposely kept the incisal protection short of the incisal edge. You'll note by looking at this cuspid that the gold margin has been kept to the lingual. The danger with leaving this as is is that the patient might drive the cuspid out of the pin retained casting. So therefore a cross pin placed in the bulk of the lingual of the gold casting uh, will give us additional retention to this very delicate casting. Okay. Now we're going to take the bridge out of the patient's mouth and demonstrate how we will drill the hole for the TMS pin that we're going to use for cross pinning. This bridge has a great deal of retention. We will be using a 27 thousandths twist drill. One approach is from the lingual. It's wise to use engine oil or a little bit of lubricant. Vaseline will do. And uh, you can come in from the lingual, as Dr. Fuselier is doing here. He's trying to determine the, the proper direction to place the TMS pin. Uh, another direction would be coming in from the lingual surface on the outside. If you would like to do it this way, you should put a little recess with a number one round burr first so the burr does not skate around. It's a little easier coming in from the undersurface of the casting. And the, the twist drill is designed to cut on its end and with a little bit of lubrication, it will drill the gold very nicely. first phase then in cross pinning. Now this bridge will be gold filings in this. will be uh, placed back into the patient's mouth and then this pinhole will be continued into the tooth for about a millimeter. Once that has been established and then that hole in the dentin on the lingual surface will be enlarged with a 0.7 or 32 thousandth drill so that the, that the uh, TMS pin will seat into the dentin without jacking the casting off of the tooth when we cement it. Okay. Now you can see the position of the pinhole. In the bulk of the gold. If you place this hole in a portion of the casting that is too thin, then it is very difficult to thread or to tap the gold. The twist drill will be drilled through the lingual surface about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Okay. Then we're into the, the tooth approximately a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. And incidentally, you never stop this twist drill in the tooth, but you always pump it.
Okay. Now I'm going to take the bridge Now we'll out. remove the, the bridge, and then we'll enlarge the, the uh, pinhole with uh, a 0.8 or 32,000 twist drill. Enlarge the pinhole in the tooth. Now the purpose of going in with a larger twist drill in the denton yeah. okay. is that perhaps we can show the, uh, uh, with the tip of the burr, we can show the... Here, that, Now we're enlarging this hole to a size that will accommodate the TMS pin without forcing the casting off of the tooth when we're cementing. And you can see the extent and depth of the pinhole, roughly a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Now, we'll, now we will tap the gold with a tap that comes from the horizontal splint mate system. And this tap will tap the 27,000th hole in the gold. The TMS pins, of course, have a thread on them, and they will fit into this thread that Dr. Fusilier is placing in the gold very nicely. Now we will place a TMS pin using the wrench that holds the end of the pin into the gold. And this then will be tried in the mouth to see how it fits in the, uh, in the tooth before cementation. Let's lock down that pretty tight. Okay, now this will be tried in the mouth. Here we go. Oh. Okay. You can see directly from a direct view the, the uh, position of the pin. Now we're threading it into the hole, into the tooth to see the approximate depth that we're going to. This can be recorded visually. Uh, thing is locked down. That then will hold the bridge and uh, keep it from dislodging when there are forces placed on the incised ledge. Now we're backing it off a little bit so the bridge can be removed and the next Step then is the cementation. Okay, down. Okay, we are placing the cement down the pinholes, and I am placing the cement in the casting itself. We have just a few moments because the lights are very hot, and we will. Have the bridge. Can you see that? Got the wrench. Got the wrench. Mm -hmm. Work it stick. Got that in my hand. Okay, we'll try to seat the, the bridge all the way. Okay. Okay. Can you bite no, down, down slowly? Just bite on that hard. Close. Bite, yeah, bite hard. So we can get it oh, down no. all the way. 
I'll bite there hard again. Okay. Okay. Uh, we need to wrench. The Here's a wrench. The pin has come out. So okay. Put it back in again. Well, the TMS pin is screwed into the gold casting. Okay, as you can see, the TMS pin is screwed all the way down now. And uh, now it's just a matter of us burnishing the margins and finishing the bridge. And uh, we will return to you after the cement is hard. The cement uh, has hardened for 10 minutes and it now has been cleaned away. And you can see, let, we'll, we'll rotate this mirror a little bit, and you can see the pin extending out of the lingual surface of the casting. And you can see also from this view the extent of the incisal finishing line. Now we're going to take a inverted cone diamond and cut that pin off down to the casting and then finish this with some sand discs. We don't cut it completely off to the casting because if we leave a little bit of metal in the TMS pin, we can pull that across the gold when we do the final finishing. You have to be careful when you use carbide burrs that they don't grab the pin and throw it out. Now it's just a matter of bending it off. Well, that's got a little bit of glare on it, but you can see there. Okay, that's better. You can see how the pin now is extending out of the lingual surface. And it's just a matter of now dressing that down with our medium sand or fine sand disc. When the pin is finished down properly, it blends in harmoniously with the lingual surface of the rest of the casting, and there are no catches or no cement lines showing, as you can see here. You can see a slight color differentiation between the stainless steel and the gold. Now the patient will be dismissed, and uh, she'll be recalled in a week to check the occlusion. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.